Do you guys want to know what basic measurement that you can make to determine if you have great sound in your home theater? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Dallasalo with Audioholics. You guys have been asking me what kind of measurements you can make in your room to determine if you have good room acoustics. And I wanted to go over a very basic video with you guys. This is very high level. And what I'm going to suggest to you is download the free version of REW, Room EQ Wizard. Um, that's the very basic measurement software you need. And then get yourself a microphone. I personally like the UMM6 from Dayton Audio. There's also the uh, UM1K. Um, I think you can buy that directly from REW's website as well. They're both good microphones. So the first step is to download REW, familiarize yourself with the software. We've got videos about that. And there's other YouTubers that have done videos as well. Get the microphone loaded into your laptop. Make sure you get the calibration file. And then what you got to do is you got to put that microphone in the main listening position. And after you get that set up in a main listen position, there's nothing obstructing your way. So it's basically line of sight to your main speakers. I want you to measure both speakers simultaneously. And if you have subwoofers, measure that as well. Do a full bandwidth measurement, a high resolution measurement. And then I'm going to show you exactly what you do in REW to look at how your room is behaving and then give you some kind of ideas of targets that I think uh, determine if you have good sound in your room or not. Now we do have multiple videos on room acoustics and when to add absorption, when to add diffusion, um, all the different kind of things you want to add to rooms. We've done a whole series with Anthony Gramani. We've got stuff with Matthew Pose. So you guys can look at our videos on our YouTube channel. You could search them up and you can learn more about that. This is basically just to show you a very simplistic measurement that I believe is very um, telling of whether or not you have good room acoustics. So in the Audioholic Smart House, I've got four or five systems in here that I've measured, and I want to go over each one of them with you, the measurements as well, to show you what's going on. So just a recap of the systems, we've got the family room system that has the Perilisten uh, speakers. As you can see here, they're matching center channel, the smaller one, the S5. C, I guess that's the one it is. We have the prototype of that one. And this room is not acoustically controlled. The only acoustic treatments I guess you can call that I have in this room is that diffusion wall in the front. That was mostly decorative, but I actually think it did really help out with the acoustics of the room. The room is open uh, to a kitchen and to the rest of the house. So it's not very well damped. I can't go and put a lot of passive room treatments in there. So that's a great case study right there is, is the room acoustics of a room that's not treated. That's actually a large room. And I want to go over that with you. The next room is our guest room. And this is kind of, you can see in this case, I've got a Yamaha RXA 6A. I was testing Wipow recently, did a video on that. And in here, we got the Paradigm Premier 800Fs. I absolutely love these speakers and a Validine micro uh, 3000 micro subwoofer. And I did a 2.1 system in here to test YPOW and I took some measurements in here. This is a smaller room. It's like a 15 by 12 room or 16 by 12 room. Not acoustically controlled, but there's a lot of mass in this room. There's a big day bed in there and this uh, throw rug. And you know, it's a small room, not a lot of uh, acoustic treatments that I could put in here, but the mass actually helps. And we'll go over some of that. And then we're in this room right here. This is the um, office where all the magic happens on YouTube as well as our editorial uh, stuff. And I've got the Revel F328s in here with the Anthem STR separates. And this room is a disaster. Uh, this room had a half wall. Uh, the base was really bad in here. And I just, it was devastating to me because I wanted to do two channel listening with my Marantz TT15S1 turntable. Was not happy with the sound of this room initially and or with the speakers in that matter just because mostly the room acoustics were not great and i did go and add some gick acoustic panels and the only place i could put them were on the ceiling and these actually did help out and i'll show you in the measurements and they're actually quite decorative so when people come in they actually like the look of this so it turned out pretty well got a couple more panels behind that fan that you can't see but most of the treatments in this room were done on the ceiling 
And then, of course, you guys know my theater room. This is kind of where I threw everything I could um, into one room to get great sound. We've got the RBH SV SVTRS active speaker system with Storm Audio Electronics, uh, FIR room correction in here uh, through the um, Marani DSP. That's part of the speaker package. We've got Anthony Grimani acoustics in here, his Sonatus line. And I did a lot behind the screen. This is an acoustically transparent screen, and I put some really dense absorption material behind it. You can see the center channel in the middle. And my walls have symmetry. You know, the left and right walls are treated with absorption, diffusion, and some scattering. And that's on both walls. And then the back wall um, has some additional absorption back there and some treatments on the ceiling. So that's kind of like the test bed of the very best that I believe I'm able to achieve in the house. And you'll see all this in the measurements. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over some of these measurements and let me just clear this out right now. What I did was I took all the measurements from those various systems and I wanted to go over each one of them uh, one by one with you. So the first one I want to go over is the family room system. And this is the Paralyson system. This, this has no EQ at all. This is basically just getting the sub to line up with the main speakers. This is measured left and right, plus this JL audio in wall subs at the main listening position. And this is actually a pretty good measurement. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's actually quite good. And I've showed you guys before when you do spectrograms to see how clean this system is. Um, that was one measure here. You can see it's basically a straight line. That's a good indication. You got good phase coherency in the room. This little bump is from the couch that you saw before. And then, of course, the base has some delay in it just because the room has no damping. I and mean, that's the real problem there is even with having two subs in that room, um, it's just not enough to overcome the fact that that room is a very large room and there's no damping in there. So I want to show you the first thing you do is you go to the tab that says RT60 DK. You don't want to use the RT60. The RT60 is more meant for large room acoustics. The RT60 decay kind of factors in. Uh, you're dealing with small room acoustics, which is what you're dealing with when we're talking about um, home theaters and just consumer audio. So once you hit the RT60 decay, you make sure that trace is selected. In this case, it's the family at the main listening position. You hit generate, and it takes a second or two for the computer to do that. And you'll see kind of this waterfall plot here um go into the limits i don't typically show rt60 decay down to 20 hertz because it's kind of a crapshoot it's not always that accurate and there's other things you can do obviously amplitude response is is important um, for low frequencies but i typically do this from 100 hertz to maybe 11 kilohertz the scale is set to 20k we'll just leave it at that so you go into the controls here and uh, one sixth octave, one sixth octave is, is sufficient. Some people use less, some people use more. I think what we're looking for is a general shape of how the room is decaying the sound, how it's dealing with the sound. So you go and you generate, and again, I said 100 hertz here, so let me switch that. Calculate RT60. And there you go. You've got a trace here. And you can see it's basically plotting it out. Now, ideally, if you want to have really good sound, and this is my opinion, and we'll have Matthew Pose on, and maybe we'll even have Anthony Grimani on. Those guys live and breathe room acoustics. I'm telling you, based on my experience with tuning systems over the last 20 years, I find that if you have a RT60 decay time between 300 to 600 milliseconds, you got pretty good sound. It's you know, on the lower side, the lower the number is, the more damped the room is, so the less reflections you're going to hear. If you're doing a two-channel system, in my opinion, you kind of want to have a higher RT60 decay because you want to have a little bit more reflections in that room because you only got two speakers producing the sound. But if you've got a multi-channel speaker system, you know, seven speakers or more, you probably want a lower RT60 decay because you're not relying on just two speakers producing the ambience anymore. You're relying now on multiple speakers producing it with the recording, you know, multi-channel recordings. So in that case, your RT60 decay, you could probably go lower. And in, and I've seen home theaters that are tuned maybe 250 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds. 
my old home theater in the last house was actually tuned down to about 212 milliseconds at high frequencies. I had too much absorption in the room at the very high frequencies. And it was, the panels were too thin. There were like two inch panels. I had Oralex do fabric wrap wall treatment and it was just too much. And you would see, you know, the decline in, in the RT60 at very high frequencies. So in this case, considering that this room doesn't have any room treatments in it, we're hovering, you know, around 760 milliseconds in the mid band. And then, you know, about 685 higher frequencies. This isn't horrible. I mean, if I was allowed to do some treatments in here and not mess up the aesthetic of the room, I'd probably absorb some of that mid energy, you know, between the 500 hertz and two kilohertz region. There is a little bit too much energy there. And I would like to see that whole RT60 decay time be closer to, you know, four or 500 milliseconds. So there's just a little bit too much energy in the room, but it actually, the speaker system in here actually sounds quite good. In fact, when I had the Paradigm Premier 800Fs in there, I was blown away by the sound I was getting in that room because I just expected that room to be a disaster. That room's got all tile floors. I put a throw rig down at the first reflection points. But the fact that I don't have any room acoustic treatments in there um, lends itself to some issues. But overall, I mean, it's not horrible what we're seeing here. Uh, like I said, if I do some EQ to flatten out some of the uh, base modes that we're seeing in that amplitude response graph, I think I'll be there. I mean, I haven't used Odyssey yet. I've got the Marantz SR8015 in there, and I'm going to use the Odyssey X PC uh, app pretty soon. And I'll be doing a follow-up video on that. So the next measurement I want to show you is the guest room. Now this, to recall, again, this was the Paradigm Premier 800F with the SVS Micro 3000 subwoofer. Small room, no treatments other than a giant day bed in there. And this is actually a pretty decent measurement as well. I got some good, really good base extension. I mean, I could flatten this out a little bit more. I just used the manual uh, EQ uh, from Yamaha. But one thing I wanted to also show you is the base level. If you look at the base level, you look at the regular high frequency response here, you're at 70 dB and the base levels at about 80. Very similar to how I tune most of my systems. The same thing with the family room system. You know, you're looking, the family room system has a little bit tapered off high frequencies. So I could probably boost those treble a little bit just because as you get older, you don't hear high frequencies as well as you used to when you were younger. I personally like to have more of a flat response out to 20 kilohertz, but that's the natural response of the speaker and uh, at the listening position, which is really good. But you can see again, in this case, the amplitude is, uh, let me go back to this real quick. So we're looking at, you know, the high frequencies at 73 Hertz, uh, 73 dB, and then the base is at 83 dB. Again, it's a 10 dB rise. This is very normal. This is kind of what you, if you get a speaker that's anechoically flat, you're gonna see in a real room with room gain, you're going to see about a 10 dB rise from 20K all the way to 20 Hertz. Otherwise, you're going to have very thin bass and it's not going to sound good. But let me show you the RT60 DK in the guest room. Again, this is the Paradigm Premier 800Fs and the SVS 3000 in a room that has no acoustic treatments. And this is still showing the family. So let me switch. Again, hit generate. And then go up here and do calculate RT60 decay. And you can see that this room is actually a little bit better. You know, the RT60 decay here is 470 uh, milliseconds. Again, there's a little bit too much mid band energy because there's just not any treatments there. But this is a good measurement. I mean, uh, if you want to compare it to the family room system, obviously the family room system is more lively. And the bedroom system is just a little bit more intimate. And the base in this system is great because I'm sitting up against, you know, kind of close to the side wall. Um, so I'm getting some standing wave base buildup. Fixing that with EQ obviously helped flatten it, but you get a lot of visceral impact in that room 
and I am very happy with how that system sounds, especially because I'm using, normally I'm using the Denon PMA 110 and they're matching SACD player. So it's it's kind of a fun system. You bring guests over and they get to hear a system like that when they spend the night. So it's kind of cool. So the next system I want to show you is the Office. And this is the Revel f 328s no subwoofer. Um, this is before I did any kind of... Uh, acoustic treatments in there and you can see the base level is too low and part of this is the room so you look at 72 db at the high frequencies versus 79 it's just a little too low i'm not happy with the base in this system and i'm looking at either doing anthem arc correction to tilt that base up or potentially adding a subwoofer to get rid of some of those nulls that you're seeing there but that's the office system. So I compared that with the RB uh, with the RBH 8300 towers. Pretty similar response that I got there. But I want to show you now the um, RT60 decay of of this room. So let me go to office, hit generate, and then go to controls, calculate RT60. Okay, so this is another example of 600 milliseconds isn't horrible, but again, this is two channel. So I'd rather have it a little bit lower for two channel to have that more intimate sound. I'd like to see more of like a 400 millisecond, three to 400 millisecond here if I had the ability to add some absorption into the room and some more mass into the room. But what I don't like is the fact that the high frequency energy has more decay than even the lower energy. And this can get kind of fatiguing sounding. And it's just, it's okay. It's just not great. Like I don't consider this an ultimate two channel experience that I'm trying to set out for. But I want to show you how this actually tracks regardless of which speaker I'm using at the very same, uh, in the same room acoustics. So when I go to the RBH speaker, which is a much different design speaker and hit generate, calculate RT60, you can see it's pretty similar in how it tracks with the Revel. So those are the two. You can see it's still, you know, around 615, 614 uh, milliseconds of decay. Now I've seen rooms that have over a second, second and a half of decay. And those are rooms that have like no furniture, just, you know, tile floor, lots of parallel surfaces on the wall, glass doors. Those rooms are horrible. If you have an RT60 decay of a second or a second and a half, you're not going to get a good audio experience in that room unless you do something to reduce and tame that problem. So I want to show you what happened after I added the GIC treatments, the ones I showed you on the ceiling. And I also um, built up that wall a little bit as well. So I did a couple of things in this room. And you can see it's actually lowered it pretty substantially. We're at 550 milliseconds. Really, if you if you ignore that peak, we're close to 490 milliseconds, 489 milliseconds. Again, compare it to the Revel measurement that we had that um, didn't have the GIC treatments. And you can see there's a big difference there. So this was a step in the right direction. And immediately when I put these panels on the ceiling, the room felt more intimate, just walking into it. I mean, it still doesn't sound like an anechoic chamber, thankfully, but you can tell the room is just more focused in sound. This really did help uh, substantially putting these panels on the ceiling. Not the ideal location of where I wanted to put them, but we ha we don't have a lot of wall space here. We've got, this is an office. We've got a lot of shelves on the, on the back wall with, you know, different things, pictures, family photos, diplomas, uh, you name it and we just don't have a lot of space on the walls to put acoustic treatments so i want to show you now the theater room system and this is pretty much the best sound in the house these are my main speakers with the subs playing very good measurement if you look at the spectrogram here just to give you an idea of how incredible it is i mean this is a straight line from 20 kilohertz all the way down very little delay at the base frequencies we're talking 15 milliseconds at 20 hertz that's just i've never seen a better measurement to be honest with you and i'm very proud of that measurement that i was able to achieve 
And again, that's because we did some serious room acoustics in here, thanks to Anthony Gramani with the Sonos system. And the RBH system is well balanced, well EQ'd. So this is a really good example of, of, of achieving the best sound you can get uh, for two channel or for home theater. So let me show you the RT60 Decay here. Generate, and then hit the calculate. And this is exactly what you're looking for. This is like a straight line. Look at how incredibly well controlled the room is. And it's hovering at around 340 milliseconds. Like I said, my old theater room at very high frequencies above like 6K, it dropped about 212 milliseconds. And I always felt that room sounded too dry. Like it was okay for home theater, but when I was listening to two channel, I always felt like the life of the room was a little bit sucked out. And you can tell if you walk into a room that's over-treated and you can't have a normal conversation, it sounds like, not like you're in an anecho chamber per se, but it just sounds too dead, then you probably have a room that's over-treated. And what I like here is that this is just a very linear progression. There's not too much energy in any particular area. You know, the mid band is still within 360 milliseconds. I mean, this is just, this is, in my opinion, the goal that you should set out for three to 400 milliseconds if you're doing home theater and you also want to have a good two channel experience. So again, it's the RT60 decay tab, not the RT60. And this is a very useful measurement uh, to get you going, to just figure out exactly, you know, what's going on in your room. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please give me comments down below. How do you tune your room? What kind of measurement parameters are you using? Do you do an RT60 decay? If you haven't done an RT60 decay, please do it now. Give me a comment down below on how your room measures and then what measures your or what countermeasures you're going to do to fix the acoustic problems in your room. And don't forget about checking out all of our acoustic related videos. We've got a ton of those. We'll probably have Matthew Pose do a more detailed video on this, or we'll get Anthony Gamani on. I'm going to do a whole expose of the theater room. Uh, this is just kind of the beginning. I'm still finishing up some stuff in that room to get things tuned. But overall, I mean, guys, the RT60 DK using REW, using a UMM6 microphone or a UM1K microphone is a great star for you. Before you go and spend a ton of money on upgrading your audio gear or your speakers or especially your cables, get your room acoustics right. Understand what's going on in your room because getting the room right is going to make or break the experience that you have, not only for home theater, but especially for two channel. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please thumb it up, subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And until next time, my friends, 